right so this is the first reaction the first thing that will happen when you provide heat or light these will break as 2x dot free radical on halogen would be created this is step number one and you, you, we, don't, you, we don't have to provide heat or light continuously throughout the reaction we just have to initiate this step later on this reaction will be self perpetuating we are going to see how but you just have to initiate by giving initially some amount of heat or light later on reaction picks on itself so this is chain initiation this initiation has to be done by us now once we have done this then the reaction immediately proceed to step number two that is chain chain propagation now what will happen now in system let's see what do we have we have ethane we have halogen in molecular form and we have halogen as free radical the halogen in molecular form have their com octet complete so they are don't they are not going to react this ethane is inert non polar non electron deficient non electron rich not going to react this is going to react further now this is important to identify once you identify the reactive species then you can identify the next step of the reaction now this is the reactive species and somehow this has to complete its octet now the amount of x dot would be very less in the system and those x dot the chance that these two x dot will combine again to form x2 is one in a million or one in a billion because, because each x dot will be surrounded by ethane 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 another x dot is surrounded by ethane 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 so this x dot will further react with another ethane molecule in order to complete its octet so this x dot is going to snatch one of the h dot from here form a good hx and leaving one of the carbon electron deficient fine enough right now the next step would be now as I told you we will just initiate the reaction by giving some amount of heat or light and this x dot and after that we will stop the radiation so this x dot that has been produced in the system would be very little now when you have a alkyl free radical now this alkyl free radical further has to complete its octet now alkyl free radical has to complete its octet then it has options to react with another alkene this alkyl free uh, uh, halogen free radical that we have created and this halogen molecule but the problem is as i told you the amount of x dot present in the system is too little so the chance the probabilistic chance probabilistically this alkyl free radical is not going to react with this halogen free radical rather this alkyl free radical will react with this halogen molecule that is present in the system in considerable amount now if the reaction has to happen then what would ha happen is one of the x dot has to react with, with this c dot and they ha will they would be they would be clubbed with each other and another x dot has to break away and move on to free this x dot in order to react with the c dot and give you this so you will have a haloethane this c dot i'm sorry this has to be have two carbon this c dot and this x dot have reacted and this x dot would come out right so what we have we have the desired product we have haloalkane halogen has substituted hydrogen right first hydrogen has been moved off and then c dot reacted with the x dot so effectively hydrogen has been removed from this carbon and hal halogen has been added so this is a substitution reaction right that's the only option that's the only thing that can happen because if this c dot it's alkyl free radical react with another ethane then nothing is going to happen suppose if this react with another ethane then if we abstract a hydrogen from this carbon and give it to this carbon then this carbon would be happy to form ethane but the problem is you are going to create another c dot in another ethane molecule so basically it's the same thing 
you have a ethane and ethyl free radical again you have ethane and ethyl free radical so delta H for this reaction would be zero so this reaction will not occur rather this reaction would occur right so looking at what is present in the system you can predict what reaction step would follow now this in this step you have to give heat in order to break the bond so delta H here is positive in this step the reaction is when you are breaking one of the bond between carbon and hydrogen and you are forming one bond between carbon and uh, hydrogen and halogen so one bond is broken one bond is formed but this bond will be a polar bond because there is an electronegativity difference between carbon hydrogen and halogen so polar bond is strong bond and we have broken a non-polar bond electronegativity of carbon and hydrogen being almost same so we had broken a weaker bond formed a stronger bond for that reason delta H would be negative energy would be released similarly here as I have told you before the bond between halogen and halogen are weak because of electronic repulsion so we have broken this bond and we have formed a bond between carbon and halogen and this is going to be a strong bond so delta H here is also going to be positive negative reaction energy would be released in these two steps right so the energy that has was given actually would be compensated this is chain propagation now let's discuss about the self perpetuation of the reaction now in this step when we have a haloethane another halogen, halogen free radical has been created now this halogen free radical will go with to react with unreacted ethane right this x dot will repeat this step when we it repeats this step then this ethyl free radical will again be generated and this ethyl free radical will repeat this step to react with unreacted halogen because all the halogens hasn't been broken in the form of x dot as I told you that it will give only catalytic catalytical amount of radiation so small amount of x dot would be created and rest of the halogen will remain in molecular form so this reaction will again repeat itself when this reaction repeats itself we again have our desired product of haloethane or haloalkane and again x dot is created right and this x dot which is created again is going to repeat this step again and an x dot would be created it goes to reaction it itself creates another x dot and it keeps on repeating so we have x haloalkane perpetuating out of the reaction we don't have to give more amount of heat or radiation so this is the beauty of the reaction it is self perpetuating so it is a chain propagation step now you have to keep these two reactions in mind because you can have a objective question of like which of the following reactions is a chain propagation step in photolytic substitution of alkane and then you'll have four options then you have to keep in mind which of the reaction is actually chain propagating